So my question to you guys is, who's going to come and fit all this for me? Because I sure as hell ain't doing it all. That's quite a lot of stuff there. Hello everybody and welcome back to Wilderness Adventures UK. So as you've just seen from the intro, we've got quite a lot of boxes to open and look through today and I'll show you what I've been getting. But before we do that, I want to give you a quick channel update to let you know what we've got coming up. Um, so you know whether you want to tune in or not, because predominantly, as you can imagine, we've got a lot of boxes there. They are going to be Land Rover videos. But thrown in the mix, I have got a knife sharpening video coming up. Knife sharpening video is just waiting on one piece of equipment that's coming from America. I've been told it's going to be here beginning of next week. So as soon as that piece of equipment comes, I can set up the camera in the kitchen, at home, and I can show you a knife sharpening video. It's going to be a little bit of a different knife sharpening video. So uh, bear with me on the knife sharpening video. Um, immediately next week, you're going to have a Raptor fitting, a Raptor dash, sorry, fitting video, as well as a, a stereo fitting video, which is going to come next week. It's only going to be bitty. I'm not going to show you wiring and stuff because it'd be like watching paint dry. Um, the rest of this video, predominantly going to be looking in the boxes, showing you what I've bought, telling you my plans. And uh, right at the very end of the video, I'm going to uh, fit just a couple of bits to the exterior of the vehicle. Um, just for you to see. Very, very simple stuff, rudimental stuff, and I'll, I'll talk you through it. I have already been working on the Land Rover this morning. Uh, I went to my uh, friend's garage, who's got some bigger spanners that I actually own, and I needed a few heavier pieces of equipment. Uh, I've done the panard rod bushes on the front of the Land Rover, and I fitted a new steering damper. I'm going to crack on, get the boxes out of the car, and I'll show you exactly what we've been buying and what our plans are. So everyone, I'm not going to lie to you all, it's quite a daunting task, there's quite a lot to do here. I did spend quite a lot of money on buying everything I'm going to need for the next up and coming few videos like I just mentioned. Um, I'll just quickly show you around it, I'm not going to unbox anything, faff about, you know I'm not that type of channel. And I'm only going to briefly show you how I'm fitting it and what I'm doing um, with a little brief description over the next few weeks. But uh, yeah, let me just crack on and show you a few of the bits that I've bought, just so you know what's going into the Land Rover. So start with the obvious thing, head unit, it's a Kenwood, it's the DMX125 uh, DAB, it is a DAB radio, hence the DAB, and it's got a DAB aerial with it. Uh, I've got various wires, that's speaker wire, and that's the power wire, I've only got a little bit left, but it should be more than enough for what I need. Um, I've got, I bought the pods, but the speakers are out of my dad's old vehicle, so uh, yeah, they're going to be, I need to try and find somewhere to position them somewhere to that somewhere today ideally I want them out the back because they're clanging and battering about I've had them in the back for a while so that's them too I'll then seeing as we're doing electrical stuff I'll then move on to some more electrical stuff bought some lights hoping to fit them in the front bumper but uh, further looking into it I'm not going to be able to fit them because the bracketing system unless I make them a bracket which I don't really want to be faffing with so uh, what I'm thinking of doing is putting them on the back above the back door in each corner. But look how cute they are. Proper small little units. They're floodlights, so it's going to light up and I can use them as reverse lights behind the Land Rover. Um, I might try and mount them today if I've got time. I have got some uh, arrangements I've made plans for later on, so I can't stay here too long. Um, although I am, as I, as I mentioned before, going to do a few little jobs and show you what I'm doing in a little while. Um, moving on, I have got a light, another light for the A-bar. So this is going to go at the top, bottom side, top of the A-bar. I will show you that today. I am going to be putting it in place, although I may not be wiring it in place. Both these lights are from a company called Wow LED. There you go, if you need to look it up, if you want to know where they are. They make quite a few different sizes, and I got them off Amazon. They weren't massively expensive. I'm not into spending a lot of money on lights that sit outside your house essentially at night time that uh, yeah, idiots might try and take and, and claim for their own so I don't want to spend millions of pounds unless I've got somewhere secure to park my vehicle unfortunately my vehicle doesn't have somewhere secure so moving on um, I've got the roof lining the roof lining is going to change colour it's black at the moment and I'm going to change it to this grey colour that's not going to be I'm not going to be attempting that till next week to be fair because I just haven't got enough hours in the day to do that. Um, I've got the spray glue in there as well um, and that as I say is going to be coming next week. 
then going to move on to uh, between the, headli the, the head lining or the roof lining and the metal there is going to be some insulation. The insulation is in here, I'm not going to unpack it just yet but it's just foam lined with foil sticks to the roof and then the head lining goes and hides it because it gets really warm in there in the, in the summer and um, no doubt it's going to be really cold in the winter so I just wanted some insulation above your head. Um, box, I've got a little bit of a box of tricks here. Uh, they're just fitting bits for the stereo with some str string wrap and some little cable ties and stuff just to keep everything neat and tidy. Um, this box here, I'll try and do this without giving away my dates of where I am. Good, I think that was out of shot. I've just got a few odds and sods. Um, I ordered this right before I did the Land Rover reveal video and it took an almighty 11 days to arrive from a UK company. I won't be using that UK company again. Um, the only reason I went with them is because all the items were showing in stock. So I thought, oh, they'll be here in three or four days. Yeah, 11 days later. So this video essentially is a week later than what it should be. Um, I've ordered some snow cowls. I do like my snow cowls. Had them on the 90. I'm gonna get them on this as well. Be fitting them today, hopefully, with any luck. You don't need to see how much I paid. Uh, I've got some gaskets for the snow cowls. There are the gaskets just there. Uh, I've got speed clips, again, for the snow cowls. I've got some fir trees. So these, these are called fir trees, I believe. Uh, these are the things that you push through your headlining to stick it to the, the, the roof of your car. I bought three bags of them just because I'm going to be ripping the old ones off and these buggers always snap. So I thought, I think, I think they're about, I don't know, they're about like 7p each or something. So I thought I'd buy 30 of them just in case I snap some. I've got some new ones. And finally, I'm not going to be doing this for a while um, until I can be arsed basically, but uh, my brake adjuster on one of the back brakes is a bit naff, so I've ordered some brake adjusters as well. So I need to cut the old ones off and put them on. I'm not going to be showing you that video, just as I haven't shown you most of the mechanical bits because I'm usually around at friends' facilities and I don't want to be showing um, people of the world what, my, what equipment my friends have in their garages. Right, so um, the final bit of the puzzle is sat right behind me. Why's that out of the way? Is this. Now this is the little bit I want to ask your advice on. So at the moment, in between the two, the drivers and the passenger seat, front seats obviously, of the Land Rover, there is nothing. There is no cubby box, there's no armrest. So I've been toying with the idea of putting a diesel heater in that space. Obviously it's right next to the batteries, so power is easily accessible. And uh, you can drill the little holes for your exhaust and your air filter in the top of the cubby box. And also, if I got something made like a cushion, I could essentially have this as my armrest. Um, so I've bought a diesel heater. It's not written in stone whether it's gonna go between the seats, but I want to see and put the feelers out there and see if anybody's done it. And if so, what you think? Would you do it again? Would you not do it again? But as I say, tempted to put, I've put a bit of diesel in it before and it's leaked everywhere. So excuse me for a second while I wipe it up. But yeah, I bought one of these diesel heaters. I'll show you what it looks like. So I will be showing you how I'm fitting this and what's going on. Now I'll take all the pipes off, but I have bought one of these. It comes in a self-contained box, so I'm not gonna be fitting it myself. And it kind of looks like that. It's the perfect size to go between the seats, to be fair. Um, it's got screws in the top to screw it down, so you're not faffing. And um, yeah, I'm, 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 it's, it's something I'm really excited about is this diesel heater, if I'm honest. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited because I've never done anything like this. Now, it doesn't have to go between the seats. I just want to put the feelers out there and see if anybody's done it and whether it's worth me doing. Um, if it doesn't go between the seats, it's that small that I could lose it in the back somewhere. Um, so I'm not really fussed whether it goes between the seats. And I wanted a portable one for the main reason of I can move it from the Land Rover to the trailer. But um, the, the, the heaters in this Land Rover are absolutely naff. Um, and rather than spend the gazillion pounds that I need to buy a new heater and put everything right, I just thought I'd buy a, a diesel heater. It just seemed to make sense. Uh, you will have noticed when I just showed it you then as well, it's got a remote control. So it's one of these that you can flick on your fob and it starts up. So in the cold, cold mornings, when everything's frozen, I'll be able to flick the fob five minutes before I set off from work and it'll be like a like an oven in there by the time I set off. But uh, yeah, that's what we've got. Uh, I've talked about a little bit what's coming up on the channel. 
And uh, yeah, now I'll just uh, crack on and get a few of these bits fitted for you. Right. I've quickly brought you around the front of the vehicle to quickly show you what I've been up to. So basically I've drilled a couple of holes under here to put the brackets on. Can you see that one just there? And uh, I've got the other one in my hand. And that was just to get the measurements of where I'm to screw these on. So I've screwed them in place. Now what I have to do is uh, put the bolts through the side and then shove it up into place. Uh, I couldn't do it while it was up there because there's not enough clearance to get the Allen key or the, uh, the Allen key socket through there and in this little tiny space here. So I'm gonna have to screw them on and then get it in place and I'll fetch you back when I've got it all situated. So guys, that's kind of what it looks like just there. All attached, all really, really sturdy. I've not wired it in, but I'm gonna do all the wiring on the same day. I can't be asked getting all the wires out today and just messing about. Uh, wiring's gonna be done another day. Greasy handprint there. But that's what she looks like. She's all in place, she's all bolted, and she's going nowhere. So, these things just here. This is an air vent, uh, and what its purpose is, is to suck air in through to your heater box to blow the air into the vehicle. So on a normal Land Rover, it's just a flat grate. And uh, when it rains, the rain gets into the heater box, then sucking in the water into, into your fan motor and rusting your fan. So uh, these uh, aftermarket ones have been developed. These raised ones with the hole on the front, which makes it more difficult for the rain to get in there. Um, but the ones I prefer are actually the ones that come round the wing. I had them on my 90 and I'm gonna put them on this as well. Now you only, in theory, need one on this side in the UK because this is where your heater box is and where the heater intake is. But I like things looking a little bit symmetrical most of the time where I can, so I tend to put them on both sides. So that's what I'm gonna quickly do right now. Dare I say, really, really easy to do. Seven screws, Phillips heads, whiz them out, gasket on, new snow cow on, job done. I'm gonna say relatively easy, but everything on this car is relatively easy and it's taken me an age to do everything today. I don't know why, it's just being stubborn. I've brought you around the driver's side to quickly show you what's going on here and the difference from the, uh, from the passenger side in the UK. So on the driver's side, you don't have any gaskets or any fancy stuff. It just actually goes down to the top of the wing top. So this is straight into the engine bay. There's no heater box or anything on this side. In fact, if you so wanted to, you could run a, run a snorkel down in through this, through this hole. But I'm not going to. I'm, as I say, I'm going to put the, uh, the matching snow cowl just so it looks symmetrical. I've uh, quickly re replaced these... Uh, plastic clips that come on as standard for uh, the speed clips again. The speed clips quickly look like this. And your screw goes down through the top of the holes in the snow cowl, through the top of the speed clip, and it just tightens up basically. Um, right nice and easy to do. No messing about, job done in two seconds. Right, I'm quickly gonna tighten these screws through. Again, there's only five of them, and then I'll fetch you back and show you the front end with the bonnet shut. So guys, just to recap, we took these ugly things off, gonna go in the bin, and we put the new two snow cowls on, and we fitted this new nice light bar just underneath. Um, and that's gonna be the, fin the end of the video today. Uh, probably gonna be just a little short one again. I'm just continuing this theme of little short videos just until I get the time to make a proper length one. As I say, stay tuned. Next week, I'm gonna bring you the video of the Raptor Dash. I'm not actually gonna take the Raptor Dash to put it back in, but I'll summarize how I fitted it, and I'll be fitting uh, the new head unit and wiring it up to all the speakers, etc. Keep your eyes open also for a knife sharpening video. That's gonna be coming very soon, as soon as I receive my package from America. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's just a quick update, letting you all know what's going on. Um, thank you very much if you stayed right to the end. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. We're chasing 3,000 at the moment. We're about that close. Last time I checked, I think I was five or six off 3,000. So if you could help by sharing, taking a screenshot, putting it on your Instagram, etc., etc., just helping the channel grow, uh, that would be absolutely fantastic and I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, until next week, you all take care.